Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to the special OAA Now football preview show. This is the Red Edition. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Taramina's on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented Television, and also those watching on YouTube. So we got a lot. This is, we talked about the um, the three divisions: the gold, the blue, and the white. Now we get to talk the red, which is one of the toughest divisions in the state of Michigan for high school football. We're going to start off with Rochester Adams. Of course, last year this team really, really succeeded. You know, been to the state finals a year, a couple of years, last season. I mean, like two years ago, last season had that heartbreaking loss to Clarkston. Um, so when you look at Adams this year, very young team, very different team. We look at the Highlanders. So here's Adam coach Tony Petrito at the podium talking about the Highlanders of Rochester Adams. All right. Uh, start off by saying a blade happy birthday to Mick McCabe. I'm not sure how old you are. I'm sure it's not too old. Um, coach Harrington, I have mad homage to you. Sorry, I underdressed for today. Um, Epic battles with you, and I feel so blessed to have ever stand across the opposite sideline from you. Uh, generically speaking, it's, it's always great to hear what everybody has to say. I would just say that I'm very proud to be part of something bigger than myself. And I think in many ways, that's what football is so unique in terms of what it brings to kids and adults. And most of us coaches are just growing up kids anyway. So I want to thank all the players here for giving us a chance to extend our youth and share the sidelines with you. Today I brought two of our seniors, two of our elected captains to my left, Brady Priestcorn, who's a wide receiver, uh, defensive end, and to my right, Magnuson Lott, who's a guard and a defensive, defensive lineman. Clearly the OA Red is incredibly gifted. Our crossovers are incredibly hard. We're excited to play and try to compete with a very young team. So good luck to everyone and stay healthy. When you look at Adams, everybody knows about the Vera offense they run. Of course, the Vera, if what people want to know, it's a triple option offense that they like to run, obviously. A lot of Veer, a lot of midline, you know, when you look at Adams this year as a team. Um, players to watch for, Lachlan Tillerson. Um, he's a player, I've been, he's been mentioned at running back. He also plays um, some linebacker a little bit too. Mateo Humbert at running back. He also plays some linebacker as well. Um, Brady Prescorn, I know Petrina mentioned him as a wide receiver. Play, normally will play tight end. He'll also be on the defensive line for Rochester Adams. Um, Parker Bullosh up front. Um, and then, of course, Drew Hapner, a wide receiver slash um, defensive back, also plays a lot of special teams for Rochester Adams. So when you look at the Highlanders this year, you know, a lot of youth with this team. So I caught up with Adams coach Tony Petrito to talk about the Highlanders along with their um, – with the recent success and also looking forward to 2023. So I got Coach of Fear the Veer, Tony Vitrino here. Um, coach, um, last season, a lot of experience. Um, how's everything been this year, this off season? We're clearly much younger. We only have two starters back on D and you know, Parker's gone and his brother's gone and a lot of our leadership left. And, but they created a standard of work ethic. And you know, we heard a lot of the coaches talk about today. Our young guys are gonna grind and you know, Brady's and, and Mags are gonna lead us and we're gonna try to compete. How about your quarterback situation? How that's been going? Well, we got three guys that are really working hard to fight for the job, and I probably don't think our staff will be have a clear understanding who that's going to be until after the scrimmage. So we got three good dudes: Tommy Offer, uh, Rhino Waters, and Lachlan Tillerson that are all playing pretty well. Hopefully, one of them emerges and makes it easy for us. How's your schedule looking? It's crazy hard. Um, you know, we're, we're starting with St. Mary's, and they're going to be much better this year away, and then the OA Red, and we cross over with Rochester. And Bloomy, so there's no easy weeks, and we're excited. We're just trying to focus for St. Mary's right now. What is the expectations here, Coach? Man, try to get better week one to week nine, because uh, if we don't, it's going to be a long year. Thank you real much, Coach. You got it, buddy. Key for Adams this year is going to be is how's that quarterback situation going to be? Obviously, Coach Petrino mentioned the three guys: Tommy Offer, um, Ryan Waters, and Lashon Tillerson. Um, I mentioned it to Tyler, Captain Scott Bernstein, a couple weeks ago on the podcast about where do you think Adams will go. The schedule is brutal when you look at the Highlanders. Opening up at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, of course, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, last year, Adams won 42-14 at Rochester. Um, so when you really look at the matchup here, obviously Orchard Lake St. Mary's is a much improved team under second-year coach Jermaine Gonzalez. 
Um, they do got a Lake Orion transfer in Darren Jones Jr., who I think is going to have a big year for them. Um, so when you look at this matchup, it is a tough match for Adams, regardless, going down to the red turf to take on the Eaglets of Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Tough matchup there for them. Week two, it's Rochester. Adams has dominated Rochester. Um, 24 straight wins. Um, ha Rochester hasn't beaten Adams since 1996. So that's going to be a very interesting matchup there. Of course, last season, Adams did knock off Rochester in a very competitive game in the year ago in the district semifinals. Um, in the district finals, excuse me. Um, week number three, it's Clarkston. And this has got star matchup making between Des Stevens, Brady Cozen against um, Brady Prescorn. Um, it's going to come down to, I think it's going to come down, there's a lot of intangibles in that game between Adams and Clarkson. This is also a rematch of the 36-33 Clarkson win in the regional finals where Desmond Stevens caught the winning touchdown to knock off um, Adams. And, you know, of course, Adams obviously losing all that experience. That's, you know, I know that's got to be stewing around Adams' mind right now. Week number four, they host Oxford. Um, this is going to be a very interesting matchup, obviously, of course. Um, you know, when you look at Adams, a little bit younger this year. Oxford's got some experience coming back. So that'll be really interesting there in that one there. Week number five, it's West Bloomfield. That's the game. And I mean, that's, I think that's in the swamp this year. And when you look at that matchup, um, I know West Bloomfield is going to be motivated for Rochester Adams. Um, that'll be really interesting there. Week six, Lake Orion. Lake Orion, of course, played Adams twice last year. Adams beat the Dragons twice, including the playoff matchup where Adams won that one 49-35. Um, Lake Orion, I know, is going to be motivated for that game. Uh, so it'll be a really interesting there, matchup there between, and I know the pre-scorns do know the Dragons quite well, um, obviously. Um, week number seven, Stony Creek. That's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, obviously, Adams has had Stoney's number, maybe except him twice. Um, I know 2020, Stony Creek won that one over Adams. Um, and also, I know 20, I think 2013, when Brad Zuby knocked off Tony Petrito. Um, both were wins for um, Stony Creek against Rochester Adams. Week number eight, Bloomfield Hills. I mean, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, over at, and, and then week nine, um, Sterling Heights Stevenson. Um, of course, Stevenson comes to Adams this year. Uh, of course, remember last year's game at um, Runkle Field. That was really interesting. Adams ended up winning that game against the Titans. So when you look at Adams this year, a lot younger this year. I mean, not a lot of experience. So only have two, three returning starters on the offensive side of the ball, none on the defensive side of the ball. So it could be a transition year. But for Adams, what helps them, their sophomore class went undefeated last year. JV program had a decent year, but their sub, their sophomore class really is the one you got to watch for with Rochester Adams going forward is that sophomore class that went undefeated a year ago in freshman football. So program strength is still high for Adams, but they are going to be, a, but this year it could be a little bit of a step back for Rochester Adams this year. Um, let's go from Rochester Adams to Clarkston. Obviously Clarkston made the division one state semifinals a year ago, but when you look at, of course, who's gone, you lose a guy like Ethan Clark that, and Cole Dillinger, that's going to be some big shoes to fill. So here's Clarkson coach Justin Pintar at the podium talking about the Wolves. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you to Coach Vernon for setting this up for us. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity for our league um, to kind of showcase what we're about. Um, coach Harrington, that was a fantastic message. I'm, I'm glad the guys here got a chance to hear, um, you know, your wisdom over the last you know, several decades of coaching. Um, we have four captains here with us today. We have Nick Wyshenko, he'll play offensive line and linebacker for us. We have Brody Cozen, he'll play defensive end and tight end and wide receiver for us. We have Des Stevens, who will play all over the field for us, wide receiver um, and defensive back, and then he'll do some return for us. And then we have Ryan Rector, who likewise will be kind of all over the field for us, play slot, um, some running back, and also be able to play defense for us on the defensive backfield, maybe as a linebacker. Um, you know, th this league is as talented as it comes. Uh, so week in and week out, we know it's going to be a battle. 
Um, and we're just looking to hopefully build off of our success last season. Um, you know, I think like everybody in here, the season didn't quite end the way we wanted to, so we're hungry to get back out there and uh, get another shot at it. So um, we got a lot of skilled guys coming back. I think we're going to be really talented in that spot. We lose some very talented players, but we're pretty excited about what we have coming back. Um, best of luck to all of you. Stay healthy, and uh, good luck this year. When you look at Clarkson, the stats don't lie from a year ago. Their defense, I know, has been, I don't know, a lot of people have been talking about Clarkson's defense, about Stephens and Cozen, but the stats say something different. In the seven games last year, they allowed over 30 points. Four of them, they allowed over 40 points. They were six in one of those games. So when you look at the defense, that is still number one concern when I look at Clarkson, is they're going to be their defense this year. Yes, you've got Nick Machensko at playing up front. You got Desmond Stevens, you got Brody Cozen. Um, you got both Bowman twins, so I'm curious to see how they do this year. Of course, that was um, that's those are two guys I'm really watching is both Bowman twins and also Ryan Rector, um, who could play every anywhere for them. But the quarterback situation is a question mark for Clarkson this year. So I caught up with Coach Pintar to talk about that situation and also the outlook for Clarkson football. I got the coach of Clarkson Wolves, Justin Pintar here. Coach, um, last season you made the. Um, Division um, one state semifinals. Um, how is how has the off season been for you guys? Uh, we've had a really good off season. You know, we try to take advantage of the the days that the MHSA gives us, and I, I think we're way ahead of where we were last year at this time. Um, you know, the coaches have put a lot of time in. Players are more comfortable this year having the same staff um, back for year two. So I, I think from last year to this year, we're we're definitely ahead of where we were at this time last year. How about your quarterback and running back situation? How's that been going for you guys? Um, quarterback position, we got we got a few different kids that have been battling um, throughout the summer. Um, all of them have have looked really good at times, and we're going to continue that kind of uh, that quarterback battle into camp. So we don't know right now who's going to be our, our starting quarterback at the big house, um, but we feel comfortable with all of the guys that we have right now that are competing for that spot. Um, running back is a little bit of a um, a little bit more sure there. We got uh, Lucas and Griffin Bowman who are going to get some reps there. Um, Ryan Rector played some there last year, and, and he'll be in the mix a little bit. So we feel pretty confident in uh, in all three of those guys running the football for us. So um, our quarterback's the one spot where we just got to see where we're at in a couple weeks. What is the expectation this year, Coach? Say that again. What is your expectation this year? Um, you know, I think at Clarkston the expectations are always to you know compete for a league, um, win districts, win regionals. I mean that that's kind of the bar that it was set by uh, you know Coach Richardson over the last several decades. So um, th that's where we always have our expectations, you know, and and we know that it's not easy to do that because this league is one of the best in the state, um, and obviously the teams that we'll see in the playoffs um, are very good as well. But th those are always our expectations. So when you look at Clarkston this year. I think a lot of expectations are high with them. Always is with Clarkston. Sophomore class obviously is going to be one of the strengths for Clarkston this year. When you look at the Wolves, obviously their sophomore class was very solid last year. Um, when you look at the schedule this year for Clarkston, it's brutal. I mean, as I mentioned to Scott Bernstein and Tyler Kep, it is absolutely brutal when you look at the Wolves' schedule. Opening up the year against Northville at the Big House. Um, night game, Northville's got a lot coming back except the quarterback. Um, that's a brutal matchup early on. I know Northville's got a new coach in Brett Luplo taking over that program, but it's a very difficult match for Clarkston taking on a very good Northville Mustangs team in the big house in Ann Arbor in week one. Then week two, they head to Southfield to take on the Warriors. Another brutal matchup for Clarkston. Um, obviously, when you look at the defense, um, you know, that they're going to be severely tested both those first two games of the year. Um, and that's a, and that, their defense is my number one big concern when I look at what Clark's in this upcoming season. Adams week three, um, the Veer obviously, that's another tough test for them there. Um, week four, they take on Stony Creek. Obviously when you look at um, with the Adams game, obviously the 36-3 win last year for Adams over, for um, Clarkson over Adams last year. Week four, Stony Creek, you know, that's gonna be another tough matchup. I think that game's at Clarkson this year. Um, week five, Oxford, you know that's going to be a tight game between those two teams. I mean, Clarkson and Oxford, no strangers to one another. Um, Clarkson last year um, 
got the best of Oxford. I know this year's game is going to be in Oxford, so that'll be very interesting there. Um, week number six is where Clarkson, you know, hosts West Bloomfield. This is going to be a very interesting game. I mean, I know West Bloomfield hasn't went into Clarkson and won there in a while. Um, they, they've had some good battles. I mean, Clarkson lost to West Bloomfield last year, um, but Ethan Clark basically kept them in that game. Um, so that'll be a really interesting matchup between the Lakers and the Wolves in that one there. Week seven, Lake Orion at home. Um, you know, last season, 45-41, uh, Clarkson went into Lake Orion and won that game. But as I tell you, Clarkson's defense, they, they just scare me here when you really look at this team. I mean, the reason why Clarkson won that game, Ethan Clark had one of the best running games of his career against the Dragons in that game. <laughs> and I remember that one really, really well, what he did against Lake Orion's defense. Um, week number eight, Harper Woods. Um, I think it's going to be the first time that they've met in a long while. Um, so it'll be really interesting there in that matchup there. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. And then week nine, Clarkson goes to Swinehart to take on Utica Eisenhower. And that's going to be a very interesting matchup, especially how Clarkson's defense matched up against Preston Crum. Um, so when you look at the Wolves, you know, they've got, I mean, they've got big upside. But also the big danger when you look at Clarkson this year. Obviously, program strength is solid for them. But when you look at the schedule, that is a brutal schedule when you look at Clarkson. Um, I think they're going to be a solid team this year. But, you know, who knows what will happen with that schedule. I mean, that schedule is absolutely brutal when you look at the Wolves of Clarkson this upcoming season. So let's now go from the Wolves to the Dragons of Lake Orion. When you look at Lake Orion last year under Coach Chris Bell, um, Lake Orion had a, like a um, had, had a turnaround year. I mean, they got in the playoffs despite a losing record. Um, so when you look at the Dragons, a lot of experience coming back. So when you look at Lake Orion, of course, Coach Chris Bell was not at Media Day. Coach John Blackstock was at Media Day, and he talked about the Dragons at the podium. All right, and unfortunately and regretfully, our head coach Chris Bell wasn't able to be here today because he's in uh, Colorado for a family wedding. My name is John Blackstock, and I've been with the program for 26 years. You know, and coming in this morning, and even last night, some people had said, you know, how come you're going to media day? And, um, you know, it made me immediately think, like, I don't know. Why, why am I here? Maybe, you know, my involvement in the off-season program, or maybe it's, uh, you know, the, I've been here before and pretty comfortable in speaking. Uh, maybe it's all our other coaches are on vacation right now, and my kids play travel sports, and have no money for a vacation. And then I, I remembered the late coach Mike Leach's uh, press conference where he talked about how he picked captains to go flip the coin at the beginning of the game. And he talked about how he finds the luckiest guy on his team. And one year he had a guy that won the Price is Right. And he thought, you know, that's pretty lucky. It doesn't get any luckier than that. So I started to think, well, you know, media day, cameras, interviews. Obviously, Chris picked me because I'm the best looking assistant on his staff. And, uh, you know, I think some of you are that are assistants here today, you can, you can probably take the same thing home with you. Uh, I have four seniors with us today that we're really proud of. They've really been uh, the heart and soul and the voice of our program for the last two to three years, even though they've been underclassmen. Uh, they are truly living Coach Bell's 2023 motto of be great by being great in the classroom, in the training room, on the field, in the community, and at home in their personal lives. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you, number one, Raymond Payne. Raymond's a slot and defensive back for us. Number two, Dominic Novak, who's a wide receiver and safety. Number three, Billy Roberson, who's a running back for us. And number four, Caden DeGraffenreid, who's a linebacker slash safety. Likes to think of himself as a running back a little bit, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay, you know, Dr. Seuss has thing one and thing two, and we've got thing one, two, three, and, and four this year, which we're really excited about. You know, everybody's excited for the upcoming season. We open at uh, the big house at 12 o'clock on Thursday. So I think that's the, one of the first football games in the state of Michigan, which we're excited to kick it off first against Livonia Stevenson, who's going to have a really good team this year. Obviously, then we get into the gauntlet of the OAA red schedule and end our regular season again back down at Saline High School. You know, in closing, we'd like to thank everybody for coming, especially members of the media, and wish everybody a successful and uh, safe 2023. Thank you. With the Dragons, you know what they got back. You look at Billy Roberson. You look at, 
you know, Caden DeGraffenried, you look at Dominic Novak, you look at Raymond Payne, who are at Media Day. But also, Tristan Hill at quarterback. You also have Trey Pacmara in the secondary. You have, um, obviously, you have an offensive line, proven offensive line. You look at a player like Kyle Purdy, Jacob Escobedo, Austin Kahn, among others. You know, when you look at Lake Orion, this is a scary team when you look at the Dragons. I had a convo a couple of months, couple of weeks ago. I think Blake Warren could be the most dangerous team in, um, in the league this year. So when I caught up with Coach John Blackstock talking about the Dragons, here's his outlook on the Dragons. All right, here we got Lake Orion, assistant coach John Blackstock here. Coach, um, obviously, you know, you look at Lake Orion, who was loaded this year um, on both sides of the ball. So talk about that here for a minute. Yeah, you know, we're really excited. We've got a lot of, a lot of guys back that uh, have been through the battles the last two to three years. Uh, we're excited about the young guys that are coming up, some of the freshmen from last year and sophomores that will be with the varsity. And, you know, we, we hope that the scoreboard works out on our end more times than it doesn't. But uh, as coaches, we're just really excited because it's such a fun group of kids to be around. They've got great energy. They've got great attitudes. And their work ethic has been outstanding. Talk about your defense and special teams. That's been one question mark a lot of people look at with Lake Orion. How is that going to look? Yeah, you know, I think you'll see some new faces, um, but we're excited about it. You know, I think we're going to run really well on, on that side of the ball this year. Defensively and special teams, you know, we'll, we'll move well, and we're going to try to keep things pretty fundamental and pretty basic so that the kids can just play fast. What is the expectation this year, Coach? Uh, expectation doesn't change. You know, it's, it's always the same to win the OAA Red. That's number one goal, number one expectation, and then to uh, see how much we can improve each week and become the best team that we possibly can. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at what the media said, there is a good reason why Lake Orion could be the most dangerous team this year in the league. And obviously proven experience matters. When you look at, when you have proven experience, that could be very scary when you look at it. So when you look at the schedule for the Dragons this year, I mean, they open up the year at Michigan against Lavonia Stevenson. Um, Lavonia Stevenson last year was four and five. Um, didn't make the playoffs. Of course, Lake Orion was the last team to make the playoffs in Division I. Um, Lavonia Stevenson does have a very good quarterback in Argel Thompson coming back. Um, reminds you a lot of the a lot of Denard Robinson when he was at, at Michigan. Um, so that'll be really interesting there to see how Lake Orion does in that matchup against Lavonia Stevenson. Week two, they had the Harper Woods to take on the Pioneers. And obviously, it's a tough matchup. This is going to be a very interesting matchup. Both teams, a little bit of experience on both sides of the ball. Um, so this, this could be a really, really entertaining game in Wayne County between the Dragons and the Pioneers. Week three, double O trophy game for the Dragons against the Wildcats. Of course, the stats, you know, does not favor the home team in this series, considering the last, um, in the last seven years, the road team has won, this, won the game in the double O trophy. Of course, Lake Orion has the double O trophy after winning last season, but now, you know, be, them being the home team, you know, it'll be very interesting to see how that matchup goes. Week number four, West Bloomfield, this could be the game of the year. And I think obviously people ask this is, to me is, you know, and I talked to many people in West Bloomfield, um, I talked to Tyra Kept at West Bloomfield, and there is a reason why West Bloomfield, why Lake Orion could be the most dangerous team in the league. And I think, you know, that could be a very dangerous matchup for West Bloomfield going up against a really good Lake Orion team that is hungry and then, you know, West Bloomfield's had Lake Orion's number since 2014, winning the last, I think, eight meetings against the Dragons. Um, so that's going to be really interesting there in that one. Uh, Stony Creek, week number um, five. That'll be another interesting matchup at home for Lake Orion. Um, week six, they had the Rochester Adams. Um, Adams won last season's postseason meeting, 49-35. Um, so that'll be another interesting matchup there. Week seven is Clarkston for Lake Orion at Clarkston. Um, Clarkston won 45-41 last year. I know Lake Orion fans want to get back at Clarkston. Um, Lake Orion's only won one meeting against Clarkston since 2010. That is, that is not, that's a stat. Lake Orion fans want to get that turned around quick. Week number eight, they take on Farmington. It's their homecoming game for that one there. And then, of course, closing out the year, week nine, they go to Celine to take on the Hornets, of course, Celine's got C.J. Carr at quarterback, and then they got some others who are very good as well. So, tough match for Lake Orion. It's a tough schedule for the Dragons when you were to look at it. 
um, Lake Orion, but there is a reason why people around the league call this team the most dangerous team in the league. And I think Lake Orion has that cap more than capable of that billing this year as that most dangerous team because of the proven experience that they got coming back. I think they can be a very scary team to watch, not only in the regular season, but if they get in the postseason, watch out for the Dragons this upcoming season. So that's my take on Lake Orion. So now let's go to Lake, from Lake Orion to Oxford. When you look at the Wildcats this year, um, the Wildcats, I mean, a lot of, lot of, I mean, like they had some struggles last year and it was a very, it was very emotional for them last year. But when you look at Coach Jack Lyon and his team this year, you know, there are some, um, you know, there are, there's going to be some expectation when we look at Oxford this year. So he, I caught up with Coach Lyon in the podcast talking about this as well. So here is Coach Jack Lyon at the podium talking about the Wildcats. Thank you, Coach Byrne, for having us out. Um, I brought three seniors with me today. I have Ian Jones, number 48, plays a little D-line for us. He's also a fullback. He also thinks he's a receiver. Got Jay Katie, kind of the jack of all trades, corner, uh, corner, tight end, kicker, might punt sometimes. So he's all over the field. And Brody Moore plays safety and also plays receiver for us. So three good guys, three guys right here that um, are phenomenal leaders for us. Uh, we had a good off-season program, so I'm excited about um, I'm excited to get into camp, let these guys put the pads on, and start getting into some real football. Um, the thing I like about this group is they just keep getting more hungry and more hungry. Every week, we throw more at them. They just keep coming back for more. So, wish everybody good luck this season. Stay healthy. When looking at Oxford this year, the Wildcats do have a lot of returning starters back. Even though the stats say they were 10 and 26 since 2018, but there is a lot of players, proven players, coming back. You look at players like Luke Johnson, Jay Champagne, um, Jay Katie, brother Drew Katie, Brody Moore. Um, in the skill positions, you got Owen Pavlock in the secondary. You got improving linemen like Ian Jones, Sean Wilson, um, Aiden Munson, Charlie Campbell. But the big question for Oxford is the quarterback situation. I talked to Coach Line not only on the podcast, but the interview as well when I talked to Coach Line about that exact matter is the quarterback situation. The Cats, Coach Jack Line here. Coach, um, we talked on the podcast recently. Um, how's everything been for you? Everything's been good. You know, we have, we've had a good offseason. Um, we are further ahead than we were last year. You know, we, we were back to ground zero this year and, and able to build um, towards our team and towards football more. Um, you know, last year we spent a lot of time as a staff and as a group making sure we were all in a good spot mentally, um, getting guys there and present, um, you know, because it was a hard year last year. So this year we were able to start from ground zero and just start building. Talk about Luke, obviously, you know, we talked last week on the pod about Luke. Um, how has he been doing? You know, Luke's been uh, out wrestling in Fargo, so he spent most of July training. Um, Luke will be back now for all of August. We had him June, we'll have him August, um, but Luke's a stud, right? He, he's going to go out there, he's going to work hard. Um, he's just got an effort level that it's hard to match. What is the expectation this year, Coach? I like this team. Like I said on the podcast, I'm only looking at week one, and I like our matchup against Eisenhower. Um, this is a group that'll just keep getting better over and over and over again every week, every rep. So, um, I, you know, to me, it's just, as far as this team will take us, um, I like our odds. Thank you real much, Coach. Yep, absolutely. There are some similar traits to the 2021 team with Oxford. When you look at, of course, the schedule, you look at everything they have coming back. I mean, there are some similar traits when you look at that team. The schedule for Oxford is brutal. I mean, they open up the year at Wildcat Stadium against Utica Eisenhower. That is a very difficult matchup for them. Oxford does have Preston Crum coming back. Um, they do got some experience coming back. But when you look at that matchup, you know, who knows? I mean, like, I remember the last time I, Eisenhower went into Oakland County, it did not fare well for them when they went to Lake Orion. I remember that one a couple years ago. So. But it's going to be an interesting matchup. I mean, it's a clash of different styles. Utica Eisenhower, obviously, with the proven quarterback. One of the favorites in the Macomb Area Red Conference this year. Um, so when you look at that matchup, it's a good matchup for Oxford. I mean, Oxford's going to like to be the underdog. And, you know, and I know how underdogs always like to get up for the favorites. So when you look at Oxford, you know, this could be a good matchup for Oxford. I mean, like, against a very good Utica Eisenhower team. 
Imagine they win that one. That will get them. That will get them some big, big points if they can win that one. Week two, Oak Park. And again, it's a clash of two different styles. Obviously, Oak Park likes to spread you out. Um, Oxford likes to pound and ground, pound the rock. Um, you know, when you look at that type of offense, they run. Um, they like to grind it out. Um, but it'll be a very interesting matchup at Wildcat Stadium week two between the Knights and the Wildcats. I mean, like Oxford, two home games to start the year. Um, really, really strong there. Week three, September 8th at Lake Orion. Um, tough match for Oxford, of course. Um, but let's not forget the road team the last seven years has won, has won the series, has won the double O trophy. So, you know, when you look at it here, the games at Lake Orion this year, who knows what's gonna happen in that one. It always is crazy between Lake Orion and Oxford when those two teams play. Um, September 15th, they take on Rochester Adams. Um, that is at Adams. Um, I think this could be a good matchup. I mean, for Oxford, I really do, because Adams is a little bit young this year. Um, I mean, like, obviously, they're replacing a lot of talent. I mean, like, so I really like that match for Oxford taking on Rochester Adams this season, even though the game's at Adams this year. <laughs> Week number five, they take on Clarkston at Oxford. Um, this could be a fun matchup. I mean, both teams, you know what I mean? Uh, I think are, are in similar spots. I mean, like obviously with Clarkson replacing a lot of talent, Oxford's got a lot of experience coming back. The questions at quarterback is a big question mark for Oxford in that game. Um, <laughs> week six, Stony Creek. Um, again, this is an interesting matchup. I think, you know, Oxford um, beat Stony last season. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I think it'll be very, very interesting there how that one goes between those two teams there. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. I think Stoney won that one last year. I got to figure it out. I got to remember my memory bank on that. Um, but week seven, West Bloomfield, top match for Oxford. Um, <coughs> it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, week eight, they take on North Farmington um, at Wildcat Stadium. Be a good matchup for Oxford. Of course, North Farmington having the travel. Um, week number nine, and I think this is what I'm going to explain to everybody here. They get to play at Ford Field against either Dearborn Divine Child or UOD Jesuit. Um, so that is a good experience for Oxford. I did talk in detail with Coach Lyon on the podcast about it. I will have a link to that on the podcast. Um, it will also be on the blog as well at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com when you look at the Oxford preview on there. So that will also that'll get you the um, information on Oxford when I talk to Coach Lyon on the podcast with. So Oxford's schedule is tough, brutal. But you know what? That's what they that's what it is for Oxford, you know what I mean? They enjoy playing a brutal schedule and you know, opening up with the Mac Red opponent when Utica Eisenhower, along with the Red schedule, Oak Park, North Farmington, then you have that Catholic League crossover. It's gonna be a difficult stretch for Oxford, but you know, obviously, you know, with everything they've been through, I mean like, you know, it'll be very interesting to see how Oxford does this upcoming season. But a lot of Wildcat fans be excited about on OC TV, catch the cats on that as well. So you know, so Oxford Community Television will have Oxford football this upcoming season for Oxford fans to enjoy. So what's going on from Oxford? Let's go to Stony Creek. Um, obviously, when you look at the Cougars, um, made the playoffs last year, had that really tough loss to Rochester in the first round. So Coach Nick Merlo was not at media day, but he brought his assistants with him, and they talked about the state of the Cougars. So first and foremost, just wanted to thank Rochester in general for uh, for hosting. I have 22 schools that are here right now. Uh, Dean, Josh, everything like this is a huge event for for us and then for everybody else. I, I, I do think, just based on my experience, that what I've seen is the definitely the best in the league. So uh, my name is Court Harvath. Uh, I have the elite honor to represent Stony Creek with these fine gentlemen. Uh, my first year here at, at Stony, I uh, had experience elsewhere, but uh, I'm representing Coach Nick Merlot, who has his, uh, his final um, vacation with his other family, not us, uh, leading into to next week. So pretty excited for him, but also the amazing coaching staff that we have, which is Coach Christian Ritting in his back there. And then not only these gentlemen here, which are our four main seniors, but also the great young men that we have across both um, varsity, JV, and then the incoming freshmen. So, uh, standing beside me are four senior leaders that I consider to be four elite men of character. So from left to right, we have Jacob Kropchak, Roman Lambert, Kyle Parks, 
and John McKay. So to us, these guys embody everything that this Under Armour perspective and culture stands for. Um, they made a choice at the end of last year to become the new leaders of our entire program, and they've done that since the time that that took place all the way through this summer program. And what we consider to be choosing elite in everything that they do, and we love them for it. Um, that's what we consider to be the armor up culture as we go into this year, and we don't do it alone. So they have those shields right in front of them, ensures that we collectively come together. Um, so when we go into battle, we're brother in arms, but that's not only on the field, but off the field. So uh, these guys and the rest of the squad that I've seen just had a fantastic summer. Uh, they worked out speed and agility, individual drills. They're, they're prepping and they're ready for, for this season. So can't wait for the competition that takes place. Can't wait for the battle. Um, and then come Monday, we're going to strap them up and get going to work. So thank you very much. Good luck to everybody. When you look at Stony Creek this year, there are a lot of questions this year when you look at the Cougars. They're known for their defense. Um, obviously, they like to run the ball. I mean, like, obviously, you lose a lot of experience from a year ago. But they do return some key players in Jacob Krawcheck, Roman Lambert, um, Kyle Park, Sean McKay were there at Media Day. Andrew Nalapato at defensive back, um, Zach Emerson up front, and Adam Bazzi at linebacker um, are also returning starters for Stony Creek as well. So with Merlo not at Media Day, I did talk to him on the podcast, and I talked to Merlo about the Cougars coming into the season. So here's my podcast with Coach Nick Merlo talking about the Cougars. So without further ado, let's start with the Red Division. We got the coach of the Stony Creek Cougars, of course, Coach Nick Merlo. Coach, thank you for calling in this week. And um, also, um, and also, have you thought about going to, up to Marquette this weekend? <laughs> That's right. Thanks for having me on, Sammy. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at Stony Creek last year, I mean, last year you guys went 5-5. Five and five, um, you went on one four in the red, um, made the playoffs, lost to Rochester 21-20 on a tough, tough, tough loss. I mean, tough extra point with about no time left. Um, and previously, you beat Rochester 43-22 in, um, in week eight. So talk about last season for you guys, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a way. Yeah, last year... Um, we had some really good seniors that uh, stepped up and played really, really well that we're going to miss. But as our philosophy is, next man up. And we're really looking forward to this season and learning from a lot of the mistakes we made last year and to improve ourselves and getting ready for 2023. When you look at, la when you look at of course, the mistakes, obviously, you know, you know playing in a tough division like the Red, um, and it's not going to be easy this year. Um, talk about, you know, and I think when you look at the games last year, you know, when you were in those, all four of your losses, when you got in the postseason, we're the OA red opponents. It's true. And, true. Uh, mm -hmm. and then you look at, um, how's the team been doing this off season? I think that's one of the big questions we, um, we like to know about around the league, obviously is how's your team doing? Um, any players, to know about, obviously, we know your offensive line is loaded with proven talent, especially you have a D1 prospect in the um, in the line. But, like, how's your skill position players doing this offseason? They're working really hard. Uh, we have uh, some great senior leadership in those groups, and running back, wide receiver, tight end, and, and quarterback are all led groups. And looking forward to seeing what they can do. Several of them are – two or three year starters on the varsity or will be two or three year starters on the varsity. So we have extremely high expectations for them. Um, any, well, any, any, um, any names, you know what I mean? That, um, that you want to give out the OA nation about the, um, about, um, any names like who could be like some players to watch for this upcoming season. Yes. Yeah, so you mentioned Jake crop check already. Yep. Who is really committed to Toledo. He's having an awesome off season and working extremely hard to be a two-way player for us, but his partner in crime on the offensive line, Roman Lambert, who will also be a three-year starter for us on the offensive and defensive line, has done a great job this offseason. Really proud of both of them. 
Um, we have some movement too in the offense line. We're, we'll start some some juniors. We're also moving some of our tight ends down uh, to play offensive line to give us uh, some more senior leadership in those spots. Um, like Patrick O'Day, he's looking great. He's doing an awesome job for us. Very selfless player to give up maybe catching the cold passes to playing the offensive line to help the team out. And, of course, uh, tight end Adam Bozzi is a really good linebacker for us as well. Jade McCarthy playing quarterback for us. Kyle Parks, Wesley Cyrilnik, Sam Fogler, and Asher Lakowski, kind of those uh, those uh, running back cut committee cut kind of guys. And then wide receiver Rex Shackelford, Jonah, <laughs> Jonah McKay, and Andrew Napolitano, all guys returning starters. So, I'm um, really looking forward to seeing what they do. Great young men um, have done a great job this off season and just looking forward to continue to get better every day. When you look at, of course, how's the program strength? Obviously, when we look at, of course, the sub varsity teams, obviously, we know the feeder system at heart. Um, how is the, um, how's your program strength been doing? Of course, the underclassmen um, programs down there, the freshman and JV teams. Yeah, you know, we have great families and a great community that really love football. We have awesome staffs on each level that love the game and teach it the right way. And the development of our kids from, you know, youth football all the way up, uh, they just get better and better every week, every every year. And um, just really thankful for the guys that spend time coaching in our programs and really buy into our culture and our system. And, uh, you know, I think, the thing that we pride ourselves on is continue to work as hard as we can and, you know, developing each this and year. Obviously, you know, um, what, obviously, you know, bouncing back from last season. So what is your expectations this year for your team? Yeah. Expectations for our guys. We talk, we talk about all the time. It's really simple. It's to show up every day with an awesome attitude to enjoy playing with your best friends, the greatest game in the history of the world and to give everything you have. And when those things are accomplished, all the wins will take care of itself. So we're just really looking forward to this this fall. When you look at Stony Creek's schedule, it is ridiculous when you look at their, their non-conference. I mean, they open up the year at home against Harper Woods. That is a brutal matchup against a team that's got a lot of experience coming back. And Stony Creek, a very young team um, going, into, going into there. But it's a home game for them. In front of the Armor Up culture there at Stony Creek, it'll be really interesting between the um, the Pioneers and the um, Cougars in that matchup there. Week two, they take on Bloomfield Hills on the road. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I mean, Stony Creek won last year against Bloomfield Hills. Of course, um, this year's game it's at Bloomfield Hills, so that's going to be really, really interesting there. Week three, they go to the Swamp to take on the Coug the Lakers. That's a brutal match for Stony Creek. I mean, because when you look at Stony Creek, young team, you know, obviously taking on the Lakers, a very experienced team. When you look at West Bloomby, it's going to be a very interesting matchup there. Week four, take on Clarkston. That's on the road. That's going to be a tough matchup for Stony. I mean, it's going to be just brutal when you look at that matchup there. Um, I think that's going to be an interesting game. But, you know, just the travel, playing in that aura of Clarkson High School, that's a difficult matchup right there for them. Week 5, Lake Orion on the road. Tough matchup. It is going to be very interesting. Of course, last season, Lake Orion went into Stony Creek and beat the Cougars 24-14. Um, so that's going to be a really tough matchup for Stony Creek there. Week 6, they take on Oxford at home. Um, I know Stony Creek's going to be wearing special uniforms for that game um i like what they i like what they do i of course i talked to coach merlo on the podcast about it um you can follow that on the podcast as well um week seven rochester adams a rivalry game obviously that's gonna be really interesting there um it's at stony creek this year so that's gonna be really interesting to see how that matchup goes i'm curious to see the match between jacob kratchak and brady free scored on up front um but I think that could be a really, really tight game between those two teams. Um, October 13th, with Rochester. I know a lot of Stony Creek fans are motivated for that game. That's what happened in the playoffs. They beat Rochester in the regular season a year ago. But Rochester a little bit younger this year. So it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. 
And then they close out the year week nine, uh, heading to New Baltimore Inca Bay, of course, take on Mike Gioni and the New Baltimore Inca Bay Tars. Stony Creek won that game last year, getting into the playoffs while New Baltimore Anchor Bay was eliminated from the playoffs. So that is going to be a really interesting matchup, to say the least, between the Cougars and the Tars over in New Baltimore. Um, of course, the coaching matchup, obviously, Mike Gioni taking on um, Nick Merlo. Um, it's going to be a fun matchup there between um, those two teams. For Stony Creek this year, you know, young team. Curious to see how this, this is going to look. I know they have the armor up culture, the elite man of character, um, but a lot when you look at Stony Creek this year, a lot of questions. I'm concerned about the program strength a little bit, obviously, when you look at, of course, the, um, the, um, the, bottom, uh, the um, program strength, obviously, in the sub varsity levels. So when you look at Stony Creek, a lot of excitement for them, but also some concerns when you look at what Stony Creek coming forward when talking about the Cougars. So let's look at our last team here, and that is the Lakers of West Bluefield. When you look at the Lakers, Last season, a lot of success, won the red, but lost to Detroit Cast Tech in the first round of the playoffs, which was very unusual for them. Made a coaching change this offseason. Of course, Tyrese Grice took a new job in Texas. So enter Zach Hilberts. Of course, I've known Zach Hilberts personally very well. He's been on our podcast numerous times. He's also been interviewed many times. So here is Coach Zach Hilberts on the podium talking about the Lakers. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, I guess I got to start out kind of like apologizing. I know that when you get down to the end of the alphabet, a lot of us have been kind of sitting here for a while, and uh, you know, but I guess I have the advantage of kind of hearing what everybody has to say and kind of picking and choosing, and uh, kind of forms what the thoughts are kind of going through my head. And it was actually something Coach Harrington said when we started that made me think back to uh, the very first year we had this OAA Media Day, and you know, Rochester's been our gracious host for however many years it's been. And I was like a young assistant coach sitting over there and uh, Coach Rowley got up from Oxford and he gave this speech about how we play the greatest game in the world. And I just remember like agreeing with everything he said but never really thinking of it like that. And I think Coach Harrington, said some, uh, you said something similar. You know, we play like the greatest game in the world. And you know, the weird thing here being all in the same room guys is like we play an ultra competitive sport. You know, it's physical, it's demanding and all that stuff. And as you look around, we compete against each other, sure, right? But when we're not competing against each other, we're part of a family, okay? Because, you know, we always think it was Bloomfield, you know, football is family, okay? Um, and just, I would, my advice to you guys would be cherish every moment of it, right? Uh, we just have a saying that we say we like to embrace the process, like fall in love with all those beads of sweat that fall off of your forehead and all the pain and the suffering and the sacrifice that each of you have, because it's something that really only people inside of this room understand. You know, unless you've gone through it, you don't know what that's like. So, I don't know, it just brought, brought those back in my brain when, when Coach Harrington said that. It was just kind of on my mind as I was sitting there uh, listening to everybody else. Um, but, you know, looking, focusing on this year, I got with me right now uh, three of our seniors that are our captains that are an extension of a, a really a wonderful senior class. Uh, to my left, I have Kari Jackson. Uh, next to me is Jameer Benjamin. Uh, and this is Brandon Davis Swain. And to my right, I have uh, Brandon Smith, who's been a long time assistant coach. He coaches our wide receivers. Um, so I've been at West Bloomfield a while as an assistant. This is my first year taking over as a head coach. And I gotta tell you how fortunate and blessed I am that I got kids like this standing next to me. Because one thing we've always believed is that you can have good players and you can have good coaches. And usually the way it works is that good players make us look a little bit better as coaches than we are. Um, but our best teams have always been led by our seniors. They've been player led. And having these guys here that have been through the ringer, they've been through the highs when they were freshmen that we got to the top of the mountaintop in, in high school football, and they've been through the lows. And they understand the standard that we have for ourselves and the expectations and I guess the, the demands that it takes to get to where we want to be. And they, you know, just as a new guy coming in, you have all these different challenges and whether you're in your first year, if you've been here, you know, uh, as long as you know Coach Flaherty and Coach Harrington and Coach Carter, at one point, you know, when you were learning it, um, I hope you guys were as lucky as I am to have guys like this standing next to me that are setting those standards for me. And I just know that that's been invaluable for me as a coach and really has been invaluable for us as a program. Uh, they're all three of them exceptional students. It, uh, as a teacher, you go around checking on these kids in the school day, making sure everybody's doing all right in your program. I don't even have to check on these three. Um, they just take care of business in all facets of 
you know, like being a student athlete. And, uh, you know, that includes uh, that there are hardest workers, uh, unquestioned work ethic from all three of them. And like I said, it just goes right back to the beginning of, uh, you know, I guess me being grateful and fortunate to have them uh, on my side leading our team. Because you look at the schedule and it's been mentioned a few times, like it's, it's difficult and it's challenging and it's a grind. The, the level of uh, talent in the league, the level of coaching that you face in the game planning, um, there's nothing else like it in the state. You know, weeks two through eight, we're playing everybody sitting here in this room, and we know the challenges that that brings. And in week one, we're kicking off at Wayne State against a really good Chippewa Valley team that you can get out there, they can run with you, and they're strong up front, um, and they can be physical too. So we know the challenges that are ahead of us. We just hope that we're there week 10 with a chance to, uh, like a ticket to the lottery, as you say. And we know if we get to that point, that we're gonna be battle tested and hopefully ready to go. So thank you guys all for you know bearing with my spiel and uh, good luck to everybody this year. When you look at West Bloomfield this year, proven experience, proven talent, players like Raekwon Nance, you got Brody Picker, um, we can play anywhere. Josh Tate can play running back. You got Brendan Davis Swain up front, Kari Jackson linebacker, Montel Johnson at linebacker, uh, Jameer Benjamin in the secondary. You got Bryce Rose, another guy, and there's among others that West Bloomfield's got. I mean, obviously, you look at the Lakers lineup, you know, a lot of D1 proven athletes on this team. So when you look at the Lakers, you know, the only concern I have with them is depth. Obviously, program strength, I'm a little concerned about, predicting the freshman levels. Um, I did bring that up in the podcast with Coach Jack Hilbers on that. So if you want to follow that podcast, um, I have it on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. But I also caught an interview with Coach Jack Hilbers talking about the Lakers' progress throughout from the, between the podcast and into training camp. I got the coach at the Lake Show, Coach yeah. Jack Hilbers here. Coach, um, obviously we were on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So talk about the Lakers, um, talk about what you expect with the Lakers this season. Well, you know what, I just, I just expect us to go out there and compete. Like, uh, if we set it up there, as, as did a lot of other people, the league is so deep, it's so challenging, the level of coaching is, is so high that, uh, you know, if we know if we go out there and compete and get a chance to, to play in week 10 and beyond, that we're going to be ready for whatever's out there. Talk about your, um, talk about your schedule. It is brutal. You yeah. got three home games. You'll be wearing the, um, the white uniforms a lot this year. So talk about your schedule. It is brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. I mean, the OAA Red, I think, speaks for itself and stands on its own as being probably like the most competitive and the deepest league there is in the state. And then if you look at our crossovers, you know, you're playing Southfield, who's just loaded, unbelievably talented. Uh, Birmingham Groves, who was in the Final Four last year and has, you know, a couple really good players. And then the other games are Oak Park and Chippewa Valley with established coaches that have won and really good players too. So if you look at it like, a, like that, it's like, as a total, like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? So we're going to take it week by week and just try to get better each week. What is your expectation this year, Coach? I mean, we have go team goals for ourselves, right? And, you know, they might, be, they might be lofty, but we also believe that if, you know, you focus too much on the goals and your expectations, that you're going to miss the things that it takes along the way to get there. So right now, our expectation is to be ready to play August 24th, week one. And, you know, if we are and we keep getting better and fixing our mistakes, we think we can be in a good spot. But... You know, we're just not just going to have some lofty, you know, high hopes and just hope it gets there. Thank you really much, Coach. Yeah, of course. When you look at the Lakers this year, our good folks at CCTV and I'm West Bloopin. I know Tyler Kett, I had him on the um, podcast a couple weeks ago. Looking forward to the Lakers season. When you look at the schedule, it is brutal. When you look at that schedule, opening up the year at Wayne State against Chippewa Valley. Chippewa Valley, of course, very good quarterback and Tommy Schuster coming back. Um, and that's going to be a tough matchup, obviously, Chippewa Valley. We know well coached Coach Scott Merchant. Um, just going to be a very difficult matchup there um, for West Bloomfield. Um, week two, they go to Beverly Hills to take on Groves. It's a very tough matchup, to say the least. Um, it is going to be very, very difficult there in that one. So it could be a very interesting game there between West Bloomfield and Groves. Both teams have athletes and proven experience on both sides of the ball. Week three, one of the three home games against Stony Creek. Um, this is going to be really interesting here. Um, Cougars, of course, obviously um, going to be a young team. Um, West Bloomfield, we know, proven experience, proven talent on that side of the ball. Week four, I think this is going to be their game of the year. I think Lake Orion. Um, West Bloomfield, despite winning both games in 2019 and 2021, have had trouble against Lake Orion. Obviously, four overtime game back in 2019. 
um, really is the one that stands out between the um, Lakers and the Dragons. That could be an instant classic. I, I really think that could be on September 15th between the Lakers and the Dragons. Um, September 22nd, they take on Adams. This will be at home for them. Obviously, when you look at Adams, I mean, this is going to be really, really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, then September 29th, of course, they take on Clarkston. Um, this is a rematch. Um, West Bloomfield won, at Clark, won against Clarkson last season. Um, so when you look at that matchup here at, at Clarkson, I don't know how long West Bloomfield's won at Clarkson. Um, and it's pretty tough to go there and win. That's not an easy place to win. So that's not going to be an easy game there for um, West Bloomfield. Um, and then week seven, take on Oxford. Difficult match going over to the blue turf. That is very difficult for them. Um, and I think that could be a really good game between the Lakers and the Wildcats, depending on what style of play both teams play. And then October 13th, this will be a very interesting game in the swamp between West Bluebeard and South Yards and Tech. Both teams, high octane offenses, proven quarterbacks. Of course, Raekwon Nance on West Bluebeard side, Isaiah Marshall on the other side. Um, this could be a making of like a classic shootout. Um, we'll see how that one goes. I know West Bluebeard's a little bit more better defensively than people think. Give them credit for. Obviously, you got Kari Jackson, Jimmy Benjamin, and Brendan Davis Swan there. Um, and then, to close out the year, Week Nine, Oak Park. Um, I remember talking to Coach Hilbert about this, and he said that um, Oak Park was the least team he didn't know much about. Other than that, it'll be very interesting. It'll be a tough matchup, to say the least, for West Bluefield. This is a very tough schedule for them. I mean, obviously, wearing the white uniforms this year um, a lot this year. Only three home games for West Bluefield this year. That schedule looks very, very nasty when you look at that schedule. I mean, but when you look at West Bloomfield, you know, they have played tough schedules in the past. And I think this time around for West Bloomfield, this is where I think the Lakers can be a very, very dangerous team this year. So without further ado, here's my projections of the red this year. Now, when you look at the red, of course, this could change. Obviously, you look at West Bloomfield and Lake Orion. It wouldn't surprise me if Lake Orion finishes 8-1 and one, and West Bloomfield finishes 8-1. and one. But I think when you look at the playoff teams here, I think it wouldn't surprise me if all these teams get in the playoffs, but I just don't see it, unfortunately. But I, I mean, like, I think West Bloomfield is obviously the favorite with what they got back. Lake Orion, obviously, at number two makes sense there. I mean, Clarkston, I have Clarkston and Adams both at three and four, respectively. Oxford, I had them fifth. Um, Stony Creek, I had them sixth, but it really wouldn't surprise me at all if all these six teams in this division gets in the postseason with how tough the red is going to be this upcoming season. So that's my projections right now when you look at the top 10 to start the year. Um, these will not be the rankings um, after during press time here. Of course, they're going to be completely different. Um, but I have West Bluebeard starting off at one, Lake Orion at three, Clarkson at five, Adams at six. Um, you know, so I was very torn out Oxford where I, I, I thought about ranking them earlier in the year, but um, I talked to a good friend of mine um, and he told me just don't rank them to start the year. I think, you know what I mean, they're better under the radar. And the same thing with Stony Creek is, you know, obviously Stony Creek lost a lot of talent a year ago. But when you look at obviously the top 10 to start the year, it makes sense when you look at the rankings to start off the year. Um, putting West Bluebeard as the top team, obviously, with the proven talent, proven experience they got. Lake Orion. I've, I've, as I said about Lake Orion, I think this is the most dangerous team in the league this year. I think the Dragons could be very scary this year when you look at Lake Orion. Um, Clarkson, obviously, they lost a lot of talent. Quarterbacks, question mark. Adams, big time question mark for them. And then you look at, of course, Oxford. Um, the coach line reminds, reminds me a little bit of the 2021 team, obviously. And then Stony Creek, you know they're going to be very competitive. So that is the take on the OA season on the Red Division. I wish everybody the best of luck this year in all four divisions this year. Let's wish the league the best of luck. Good luck, everybody, to the, everybody in the league. Good luck. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care. And follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4050 at blogspot.com for the latest updates around the OA. So follow the blog as well. So I will take care, and I'll see you all next week for the pod, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you then. God bless.